Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of the security talk show by 360 PSA. In this episode, I have with me a very special guest, Mr. Chakradhari Rov, also known as CR in the industry. He is a passionate security architect and an instructor and in this episode, he will tell you how to hire the right kind of private security agency for your needs. He is an alumnus of the prestigious ISA Israel where he specialized in protection and counter-terrorism. He is also a Rex Karamvir Chakra awardee and the Zonal Chair for Peace Building and Conflict Resolution for Rotary International District 3011. Currently, he is the founder of Tango 6 O'Clock and the Chief Instructor and Mission Director at Mission Sadev Satark, where he has been tirelessly educating individual citizens on basic security awareness training so that they can take charge of their personal security. So, without further ado, let's hear it from him. So, CR sir, welcome to this episode and thank you so much for taking out the time and speaking with us. Thank you so much, Manan, for inviting me on this, uh, you know, this this crazy journey that you've started. I'm, I'm so loving the episodes that you're making. I'm really glad, sir, really glad. Thank you so much. So, sir, we'll directly jump into the conversation with you, right? Done. Sir, as a security architect, and as an instructor, right? Who do you think should hire a private security agency? Uh, Manan, <laughs> I mean, direct on, on the bullseye. So I think uh, the most important element that is required for somebody to hire a PSA is to first get a security audit done. Uh -huh. It's like, you know, asking, ke, uh, bhai operation kis ko karana chahiye? Okay, aap, you know, you, you get an uh, investigation done on yourself, okay, what is wrong with you and you know, where, where are the ailments and then you get into the, uh, get onto the operation table. So exactly the same way, I think security audit is the most important, uh, you know, uh, process to be done before you can even think of, uh, you know, hiring a security because what security audit does is is basically an in-depth study of the security architecture that is man material and space that is already there for you understanding the assets understanding their uh, criticality for the client finding vulnerabilities you know for those assets then checking if the current security architecture is able to deliver in accordance to the security requirements or not right so unless and until you know this there is, uh, you know, you will not know if there is really a need to hire a PSA. Mm -hmm. Now, PSA is a small part, but very important part of the security architecture. So what the security audit really does, okay, what it does is it helps you understand as a client, you know, who wants to hire security, it helps us understand are guards really needed? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Okay. If yes, how many guards are needed? At what positions are these guards needed? What role will these guards be playing at that particular position? Okay, wherever they are deployed. Uh, that's not all. What is going to be these guys, these guards deploy honge, in ka physical or technical capability? Kya hona chahiye? Right. Okay. And, and these kind of details. So it security architecture goes very, very deep. In fact, you know, uh, what, what I would go uh, a little deeper and suggest is that when guards deploy, hote hain, uh -huh. hai, there are two kinds of posts. One are the monitoring posts. Second are the response posts, you know, in a security architecture. Now, the difference between the two is monitoring is the guard is just standing there and he's just looking around. Right. He is not expected to respond to any situation that happens there. Mm -hmm. Correct. The second one is the response post where there could be an imminent uh, incident that would happen. And this person who's standing there is supposed to respond. Correct. Now the mere identification of these two kind of posts, you know, for the guards can actually end up saving a lot of money for uh, the client. Right. Because then you can use other you know, measures on, uh, you know, how you can deploy better tactics in these, these uh, places. Absolutely agreed, sir. So to sum it up, essentially an end client who feels that there could be a need to hire a private security agency should first get a security audit done. 
identify and determine whether or not a private security agency or private security guards are needed at all and once that has been determined then also get into the specifics as to how many guards what kind of guards what type of rules what type of sops all these things need to be first determined and only then can they actually go and hire a psa right absolutely now usually what uh, mistake people make is that pehle they hire the guards yeah then the sops are written ulta chalta hai the security architect should come and tell you that we need a guard in this particular place and this is going to be his role at this particular place right and then there are a psa and you tell them that this is the position where you know where i need uh, somebody and this is the role he is going to play and these are the physical and uh, you know educational requirements right. i need for this person in this place right and sir we'll definitely delve deep into how to actually go about evaluating a psa right but before that sir i wanted to ask you that what really can an end client expect from a psa so for example i know for a fact that end clients also expect that you know a psa should also act as a liaison with law enforcement that is one of the examples then there are other uh, ops heavy clients that they expect that you know the psa should also play a role in their operations you know by streamlining the process by managing logistics etc so to that extent what do you think is a fair expectation from an end client's perspective for a psa uh, manan it is uh, a little uh, you know uh, tough to say what is you know define the real actual expectation from the client because uh, what i have seen you know being a part of the industry is that it is basically the client and and the psa so the client says that you know okay you know if there is a theft on my site i will need the psa to go and you know register the police complaint and all that right and there are times when the psa agrees to something like that okay without really understanding the you know the legal side of it because see i cannot go and register an fir for uh, you know your stolen car yeah the person who owns that car they have to go and register the complaint agreed correct if i understand correctly so so it is not how you know things work on on reality but there are psas you know who take up the responsibility of you know doing this there are also psas who take up the responsibility of uh, you know uh, making sure that you know people are standing in line you know at the food table you know mm-hmm. they are uh, so basically jobs that are not security security yes. yes you know which do not fall under the security and safety aspect they are also taken by uh, you know psas many times and i think this is mainly because of just to you know please the client ke chalo acha mm-hmm. we'll do this also we'll do that also you know just to back the project you know the psas uh, sometimes try, try to you know tend to take up uh, roles which they are not one they are not meant for that second they don't have the trained manpower for that yeah and uh, i think they just taking uh, you know an additional risk onto themselves understood understood and very well said sir because i believe that once as a market participant you lack significant bargaining power in the client equation right only then are you willing to compromise by taking up additional roles and responsibilities so that as you said right you can please the end client to give you the business and and the sad part is that this is happening because there is no security educate that is the reason why why these things are happening because let's say if i am on the client side and i am security educated i will not want my security guy somebody whom i am trusting with the security of the entire setup to put his nose into managing lines you know or doing some other errands right because i understand the criticality of security here right so i will not want my security guy to do something else i want him to completely focus on the security aspect the security of man material and space that that is you know that is owned by me interesting sir but then whose responsibility is it to educate the end client is it the end client themselves 
or is it the private security agencies see now <laughs> this is a very tricky question now a private security agency will not want to educate the client because you educate the client and uh, you know you are empowering him with uh, tools and tactics to basically reduce the number of count of your guards hmm. which is basically on which you are you know making your profits so it's counter intuitive to business for you exactly you know so you are you are axing your own uh, profits there so a psa would not want to educate their client Mm-hmm. and that is where you know people uh, evil i would call that you know in a uh, on a lighter note evil like us who are security architects we come into the picture and we end up educating the client ki yaar you don't need this right why do you want this why do you want that so we start asking uh, you know the client questions that you know okay you want uh, 20 guards why do you want 20 guards i don't mm-hmm. see a need for 20 guards right correct and uh, you know if i can be honest you know which i think this, that's what the podcast is all about a lot of times the there are guys on the client side you know who are hand in glove with the psa okay correct so they get their you know back door cuts and all that stuff right. so in that case what i have seen is that when i am questioning the client that you know the, the guy of the client it would be the cso or you know junior manager or whatever stuff they don't have answers why they need 20 guards hmm so that is when you know a lot of times it has happened that uh, you know the chairman of the company or the md ceo of the company they directly hire our security architects and they say that you know i want you to give me a third person uh, perspective on this right. so that's when we jump in and you know we disrupt the commission <laughs> structure of uh, all of these guys and we end up saving a lot of money for the client absolutely agreed because i think if the psa is the one who is responsible for a security audit then of course there is a huge conflict of interest if the end client wants to insource this process of auditing for security then in most cases they would lack the capabilities to do that so there is definitely a need for a third person or a third party to exist in this value chain who can give like an unbiased neutral kind of a view right absolutely and this is one of the main reasons manan what i figured out and from the uh, moment i started in this industry as a security architect i have only given my clients the security architecture design that is it i hmm. do not recommend psas to my clients i do not recommend uh, cctv vendors i do not recommend uh, you know access control vendors i don't do any of that right Because that is where the client is having the confidence in me that if i am saying i need 10 cameras here he knows that boss i i have nothing got to do with any of the vendors right because you also have to avoid that conflict of interest situation absolutely it's very important for me yeah and i think as a security architect there is a bigger burden of hmm. proof on us where we are saying that if i need a camera here i have to justify yeah you know i have to have a thorough justification of why i need that camera there what is it going to watch and how is uh, you know whatever footage that it's capturing there how is it going to be beneficial for the client right so it is not just about telling that okay yahan pe you know there is some work happening here let's put a camera i can't do that yeah yeah there has to be a strong basis for all the recommendations that are being made and as an end client let's say if i have to be an end client so i understand that you know one i have to go for a security audit that we have already discussed but even when i have gone for a security audit whatever the recommendations that have been made to me i have to question the basis i have to understand the logic for those recommendations so these are the two steps that i have understood thus far but sir what could be the other steps that an end client can really keep in mind or take while evaluating a psa you know how should they go about finding the right kind of private security agency for their assets so i think uh, the most important thing that uh, the end client should be looking at is that one thing is that are the guards really trained mm uh-huh. okay now i'll tell you the sad part today what is happening in most cases you know by at least uh, uh, i would say 70% of the sites that i have audited mm-hmm. i have found that uh, 
these training certificates you know the pasara training certificates that that are supposed to be mandatory the 160 hours training they are all fake wow. fake in the sense the certificate is genuine the issuing authority is genuine hmm. the signatures on the certificate are genuine but the guy who has uh, his name on the certificate when you call him and you ask him you know what is the first chapter of uh, you know the curriculum or what is the fifth chapter what did you read in that he has absolutely no clue what the curriculum is hmm. so i think this is uh, in fact a very simple thing what uh, a lot of you know end clients can do you know you have the curriculum of pasara on google yeah so when you are interviewing uh, you know the deployment that that has been given to you by the psa uh, you know randomly pick 5 6 guys out of the crowd or 10 guys depending on how many you are taking you know pick up 10 15% of the deployment and uh, ask them questions on on the curriculum and you will know you know how genuine or fake they are right so questioning the guards and you could you need not necessarily be somebody with let's say a huge capex investment in a facility like a factory or a manufacturing plant etc you could also be an rwa you could also be a absolutely. resident in your colony absolutely absolutely yeah. in fact in fact manan rwas you know i have seen you know it's very uh, unfortunate that they think that it's an rwa even when i to speak to certain psas they take rwas very lightly mm-hmm. and i'll tell you the reason probably why many psas again very unfortunate that this is happening uh, you know around us many psas are using rwas to rotate their morning stuff mm. i'll tell you what these guys are doing they send their uh, you know 10 personnel to the uh, to a corporate company in the morning you know 8 10 hour 12 hour shift whatever that is once they get out of there and in the evening they put them on a second shift on the same day at an rwa why because in the night there is no nothing to do in rwa you can sleep wow correct so this has been noticed you know i have noticed my colleagues from across india have been telling me that you know cr this is happening at a very very you know alarming rate and the worst case worst thing here situation here is that the rwa you know the the president the secretary whoever they are they are aware of this hmm and they are not taking action on this because they are getting the psa for a very cheap price yeah so the psa is telling the president or the rwa saying that you know sir raat ko there is nothing happens here at night theek hai to i'll just put a guy there will be somebody there you know to respond to emergency and all that stuff but we will charge you less for that hmm so the rwa is happy because they they getting you know they paying out less yep and uh, you know it, so it's kind of a win win situation where both parties are actually losing absolutely true sir and i mean in this process i think all stakeholders are going to suffer eventually the end client is going to suffer whenever there is a security incident that will eventually occur because your security setup is inadequate so that is where the end client will suffer the psa will suffer when the security incident happens and the responsibility of that falls onto the psa's shoulders and then when they are not able to justify their non performance then they are just simply replaced so they also suffer by losing business you know and of course security as a function is diluted to an extent where it's i would say that it is losing all its importance right absolutely manan and uh, and and the reason for this is because most people who are interacting with the security uh, private security or security as as an architecture around us whether it's uh, given by private entities or by you know government entities we don't really understand what security really means yeah a common man does not understand what security really is what safety really is what is the difference between safety and security so unless and until a common man is educated in these uh, subjects you will never know which is right which is wrong you know which is of a good quality which is of a bad quality and i think the onus of that also lies with the individual right the common man as you said because ultimately Absolutely. they are going to be the recipient of that good or bad security setup that they create for themselves absolutely absolutely 
definitely agreed sir sir so i mean given the scenario that is today right where security as a function is being neglected or is being taken for granted as we have discussed right what do you think is required to change this one of course is the education of the common man then i think second is of course the intent of the psas is there something else that we can do to change the scenario today and what do you see happening in the private security industry going forward i mean there are two questions rolled up into one okay so i'll answer the second one first and i'll you know we'll go to the first one uh, after that sure so what where is the ps uh, psi going you know I, i'll talk about india okay mm-hmm. because i think that that's more uh, relevant and important yeah uh in the next probably 1 2 years or 5 years worst case scenario psa will not be what it is today okay okay as pick up as people become more aware security aware and as they start moving towards uh, you know technology mm-hmm. psas will become mantech right okay i say man tech and not tech man because mm. it will always be driven by man mm. because security as as an element there always has to be a human element making the decisions right correct no matter how advanced uh, ai becomes or ml becomes we cannot leave decision making to machines yeah so what will happen here is that the psas will have to use technology to monitor and they will have to use man to respond hmm so when i say this what i am hinting at is that the next big thing in psas is going to be qrt capabilities which is quick response teams capabilities all right okay this is going to be a very very major deciding factor going forward for anybody you know i'm not talking about j- just civilians but i'm talking about more about corporates and you know your uh, manufacturing units bigger setups even rws for that matter mm-hmm. rws institutions where you know you have psas uh, taking care of them so you will you will psas will need qrt capabilities to be able to justify themselves as the preferred choice for these people understood because the way things are happening around us you know both internally in india and globally you you know it will not take uh, much time for a mob to just form right correct so in in what 5 minutes 10 minutes you have a mob of 50 100 yeah. for whatever reason correct now if if that is how quickly mobs are forming you will need qrt capabilities which are that fast or rather even quicker right absolutely even quicker that is why i said use tech to monitor hmm. because what the tech will do you know with all the ai and all that stuff behavior analysis and all that when you have ai cams deployed around your facility they will pick up that you know okay this this space had only two people you know suddenly there are five now there are 10 yeah correct that subtle things the ai will pick up and it will intimate the control room saying that you know hey something is building here yeah and that's when the qrt needs to be summoned and they have to be really fast hmm very interesting very interesting and most importantly here manan is going to be that this is not going to be limited only to the government agencies mm-hmm. very soon there will be a time where the government agencies the law enforcement and the private security will have to work hand in hand and right. at a very very serious level and a very 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 professional level right so that day i am uh, i i can see that day coming soon especially for a country like india where you know population is massive very interesting sir because what you have said right you it's a brilliant insight into the evolving nature of threats and to respond to those evolving threats the psa today has to start evolving absolutely right and in that context sir do you think that today's psas on an average are they prepared 
for this kind of a change are they prepared to deal with such kind of scenarios going forward i don't think so manan because you know developing new capabilities to uh, to counter the new age threats that are coming up you will need two things mm-hmm. one you will need manpower which is educated okay right. and you will have to skill them now qrt is not a joke qrt is peak performance under massive stress right correct so the qrt training is a different beast in itself so you will need psas who have people who can be entrusted with these kind of skills right and they are going to stick with the company because right now biggest challenge with psas is that you know today you have a guard here today he is with somebody else yeah correct and the worst thing is even when psas change and i see it you know everywhere especially in rws and even in factories mm-hmm. the guards don't change mm. the guards remain the same the uniform changes it's just a rebadging exercise exactly so when when somebody you know says that okay now we have a new security you know at our facility I, i the first thing i do is i said give me the names of the old guards and give me the names of the new guards yeah then i tell you how new your security agency is <laughs> <laughs> you know and and trust me 80% of the names are same right and then when you dig deeper you know when you doing the audit and you ask that why did you replace the old agency they will say no the guards attitude was not good this that blah 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 and i said but you have the same guards yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah correct so how different is it now yeah so basically you know this this is what he said people don't know why they are doing what they are doing mm. correct so so coming back to the uh, you know are the uh, psa is capable enough to make this change one is they need that manpower yeah correct educated and loyal and integrity driven uh, individuals yeah then they need to invest in their training Mm. second they need to invest in the tools and tactics that need you know that that will uh, empower the qrt teams right so there is a lot of investment that will go into this process of upskilling or you know preparing yourself for the uh, the upcoming threats right so the number of psas that i have spoken to in the last probably couple of years very few have been able to see this come mm-hmm. okay and abhi recently just a uh, couple of weeks back i had a chat with one of the psa guys and uh, and this happened after you know he woke up seeing what happened in bangladesh mm-hmm. and he said uh, well cr uh, qrt yaar we i think we need i said i told you before mm. you know see because when something happens in a neighborhood yeah it is kind of a wake up call but Absolutely. it is not a good enough wake up call for people unless and until it happens in their own space yeah so you still have people who are taking it easy you know who are taking it lightly that you know are any nothing of that sort will happen here yeah god forbid nothing should happen but security doesn't run on uh, you know god forbid cases right you know we we predict prepare protect prevent and we preserve no absolutely sir and i think that's a brilliant note to wrap up this conversation with because you know there are so many actionable insights for a private security agency who's listening to this conversation that they can start implementing today to be prepared to be ready for what's to come in the future absolutely thank you so much for watching this episode I hope that now you know exactly what you have to do to hire the right kind of private security agency for your needs. If you found this video useful, then do like it and share it in your network and do not forget to subscribe to the Hardened Civilian YouTube channel. We'll see you in the next video.